to take the ownership of the wound. That's why I said not the wounding, just the wound. wound. When you own the wound, you own your healing. Mm -hmm. One thing is truth always wins. Mm -hmm. It always wins. It just takes its time. Yeah. It's really hard to not try to defend yourself when it's yet another attack. And particularly if you're sort of in that healing process and you're on the other side of it, you know, you're maybe feeling a little bit more powerful and confident and wanting to stand up for yourself, but you're just going to fuel, you're just going to fuel them more. Mm -hmm. And there's, and there's not going to be a win there for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. and don't try to ruin me with lies when truth can ruin you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the truth can ruin you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is Powerful. the, um, narcissistic abuse recovery like call welcome to the neo narcissism podcast hosted by emotional intelligence specialists kim and jackie of element q alongside strategic psychotherapist brad kaufman Hi everyone, welcome to the Neo Narcissism Podcast. We're happy to have you join us today. We are going to talk all about the lack of resolution when the narcissist discards you. This might be a good time to talk about what a healthy relationship would look like in mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm. Because if people are accustomed to being in narcissistic relationships, they may not understand what it's like to have healthy resolve. In a healthy relationship, both people are interested in resolve. And I know for some of our listeners out there, that that's a real foreign concept, right? Like you aren't the only one that's trying to open up the discussion to get the resolve. No, the other person may actually come to you or you come together and you have these discussions towards it and they're willing to sit through the discussions no matter how long there there isn't any of this how many times are we going to talk about this there's an understanding that we're going to talk about this until we get it figured out yeah we're going to talk about this until we get a mutual understanding of each other we're going to talk about this until we find a mutual space or a shared space that seems reasonable for both people where you you have some level of resolve to move forward, which opens the door for deeper reconnection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For those of you that have never had, had this, it, it may be difficult to conceptualize somebody that's actually able to do this as well as you are. And I think it's important here to point out that this is not dredging up an event over and over again in order to punish right. the, the other person. This mm -hmm. is about seeking deeper clarity and understanding of the person you're in partnership with mm -hmm. right? so that you can really understand who they are, what motivates and moves them, what their belief systems are, all of that that's influencing. Mm -hmm. Empathy. Yeah. Empathy. What a novel concept. Yeah. <laughs> empathy. True. True empathy. empathy. True care mm -hmm. of knowing what the other person's experience is. I often like to talk about our personal universe versus the universal universe. So in a relationship, well, let, let me just kind of conceptualize this concept of personal universe. Wherever we as individuals go, our subjective personal experience is that we are literally the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. We wake up and we say the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. No, it doesn't. The earth is spinning and we're going around the sun. The sun is not going around us. But our perception, our personal experience is that. So it doesn't matter where we go. We are literally the center. Our experience is we are the center of the universe. But then there's a universal universe where we can actually look at the actual factual truths that, yes, the earth goes around the sun. It takes 365 days. The earth spins this fast and you know all of that type of stuff that's a universal truth so we're a bunch of little personal universes wandering around in this universal universe and we run our little personal universes run into each other like mm -hmm. so the the whole concept of empathy and understanding this other person's experiences what's it like in their universe mm -hmm. So that's what true resolve 
is about. It's about two universes coming together and molding as one in that moment. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but really what the narcissist does is they come in, they want to be the center of your universe. Mm -hmm. Your universe can no, you can no longer be the center of your own universe. They have to be the center of your universe. It's not about sharing this universal space with each other. So then everything that you do, it's what I call orbital space. You have to be in the orbital space around them at all times. So even if you're out in the world doing your own thing, you have them scripted in the back of your head of what you are allowed to do and not allowed to do according to their demands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you're up, like you said, when you're out in the world, you're not with them, but you're still operating as if you're in their universe, mm -hmm. not in your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now it's fine to be considerate of, yeah. you know, other people's sensitivities, how you're honoring the relationship, how you're honoring that person and everything like that. But for that to overtake everything that you do, for that to be the primary lens on everything you do, typically the, the nicest balance is like a Venn diagram of two circles coming together and they're intersecting. They aren't eclipsing each other. Mm -hmm. They're intersecting with each other. Mm -hmm. So they aren't far apart because then you don't have any connection if these circles are separated. But again, like I'm saying, they aren't completely overlapping where mm -hmm. each of you loses yourself or one of you loses yourself for the sake of the other. It's you have this nice joint. It's kind of like those, you know, pretty pictures of wedding rings when they yes. have them kind mm -hmm. of like interlocked with each other. That is the ideal picture of relationship. Mm -hmm. You have this, this mm -hmm. section of shared mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and then your two individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And within that section of shared space is where resolve, ha resolve happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. In healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically what they want to do is they want to demolish your personal universe. They want to leave you extremely wounded. And they hope that they're the only resolve to it, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that they have the only answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they are the only answer. Ah, uh, Yes. That's great. Yeah, they yes. are the only answer. They are. Yes. It's not true. Mm -hmm. That's their belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're being if you're trained enjoying... that they're the center of your universe, then just mm -hmm. in that fantasy and illusion. For sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of really beautiful pieces of information and imagery for people. And I think it's helpful, at least I know for me going through my experience, to recognize the lack of resolve. The, the massive betrayal and the massive lack of resolve that I was left with to process, if, if, if I didn't start dealing with it on my own, I would have been begging for that resolve to come from outside of me, mm -hmm. right? Rather than own the wound, own the reality that this is what I'm dealing with, and this is what I need to do. And it doesn't feel fair. It doesn't feel fair that we should own a wound that we aren't responsible for, yeah. that somebody has inflicted upon us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if somebody hits you with a baseball bat, it doesn't seem reasonable that we now have to take care of that wound that they left us with. You know, they hit us with a baseball bat and run away. Mm -hmm. They aren't helping us. Heal. Yeah. And if we just ignore the wound, well, that's not going to help either. It's Walking just, around with a festering wound. Exactly. Yeah. It's just going to get worse. <laughs> so that's why we're, we have to take the ownership of the wound. That's why I say not the wounding, just the wound. wound. When you own the wound, you own your healing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. Now, again, like I said before, it, there is something useful in or at least relieving in understanding that their cowardice their cut and run mm -hmm. catches up with them mm -hmm. right it has that shelf life and whether they want to deny it consciously subconsciously it will own them mm -hmm. so then their coping strategies have to get bigger have to get more intense and ultimately become highly destructive because how do you shut 
the truth up. You don't shut the truth up. You can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll show up. I mean, it may show up in unhealth in their body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, in every other relationship that they're having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing is truth always wins. Mm -hmm. It always wins. It just takes its time. Yeah. It'd be nice if it was quicker. It would be. Than it is, but... <laughs> what was the quote you said earlier today about truth? Um, how was it? Don't try to ruin me with lies when truth can ruin you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when the truth can ruin you. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is Powerful. the narcissistic abuse recovery like call that's profound it is it's deeply profound their their lies will again they have a shelf life um because again truth always wins so they they can go out there and they can smear your name they can tell whatever narrative or whatever story to anybody that's going to listen to them mm -hmm. And they can get away with this. And a lot of times we'll want to just like jump in and stop them from doing that. But we can't. And even if we try, then we just, we end up kind of confirming yeah. their narrative. It's best just to let it float. Let them have their day. And just trust truth. Mm -hmm. Really hard to not try to defend yourself when it's yet another attack. And particularly if you're sort of in that healing process and you're on the other side of it, you know, you're maybe feeling a little bit more powerful and confident and wanting to stand up for yourself, but you're just going to fuel, you're just going to fuel them more. Mm -hmm. And there's, and there's not going to be a win there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so important to recognize how that can just add to fueling them. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing too is win is language the narcissist uses. Mm -hmm. So if you as the empath and interacting with the narcissist are looking for your win, you're just playing into the same game. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a great point that the interpretation of the win is different, whether you're the empath, empath or the narcissist. Yeah. So the win then for the empath is really in the, in the resolution. Yes. It lies in the resolve. Yeah. yeah but so if you're looking... a better way to... Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If you're looking, like, I'm thinking competitive win. If you're looking mm -hmm. for the competitive win to destroy them or to, I don't know, to be better than any of those kinds of things within the resolve process, you're just playing into that same game. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right because the win, the win is referencing, like, a win-loss. So somebody has to lose. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the empath side of things, you're not necessarily interested in somebody else losing. No. You're just interested in it being a win across the board. Yes, everybody winning. Yeah, so it's a resolution. Yeah, mm. great distinction there. Yeah, resolution and healing. And so you're right. And I want to I wanna stress this even more because this is such an uh, important thing to understand. Yeah, it, it's their language. If you try to play their game, uh, you won't heal. Yeah. The only way to heal is to do the work, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not about them anymore. Mm -hmm. It's it's about what you can do for your own well being. Yeah. And that healing isn't gonna come from the outside in. It nope. has to come from the inside out. Yes, it's nice to have loved ones or a, you know professional helper help you through that space to draw that healing out. Oh, jeepers, how far do they want to go with this? So, yeah, th this is another topic for another day, but our our bodies naturally want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. We naturally want to heal. We just have to get ourselves out of the way, essentially, to do it. <laughs> so, yes, we can facilitate the healing. So, for instance, right, if we get hit by that baseball bat and the coward runs away, okay, we can facilitate and nurse and dress and do all the stuff we need to with the wound right acknowledge it mm -hmm. and be careful around that space for that period of time but we don't have to sit there and concentrate and meditate on mm -hmm. healing our body just knows how to do it when we facilitate the healing process mm -hmm. so it's important for people to realize again that when we cut our finger it's not just it's not just natural for a cut 
to heal. It's natural for our emotional selves to heal as well when we know how to facilitate that healing mm -hmm. or turn to somebody that we know can help us facilitate that healing. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that really kind of sums up this concept of mm -hmm. re resolution and of the lack of resolve that happens in the discard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it certainly can be richer and fuller and, you know, if you have questions or comments, leave those below. Mm -hmm. We do, we will be hosting live events anyway, so we can delve further into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the important piece of this is that people realize what is actually happening and what that yeah. feels like and that this is really normal in interactions with narcissists. Um, and you don't need the narcissist to give you resolution, re resolution to heal either. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can heal your own wound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. So, and of course, as usual, you don't know how to deal with something until you know what you're dealing with. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And remember to subscribe to our podcast channel and YouTube channel and share these videos with your friends and family. And please join our online community at neonarcissism.tv.